So uh, CBDNA asked us to come together to talk about your compositional process, particularly for grade three and lower, and how someone that writes pretty technically ambitious music, what's the process for you? Um, it's very difficult to write easy er music. Um, and I've tried it maybe, I don't know, I have like five grade three pieces now or grade three, four, or I tried doing a two and a half. Whatever I try to write it ends up being a grade level harder than what they've asked for generally. So hopefully schools are keeping that in mind when they ask for a piece that they're not going to get a grade, you know, two and a half ever probably. Um, the process, uh, once it's all commissioned, I start trying to write it. The hardest thing is that I want the end piece to sound like me, which is, you know, that, I think that's the most important thing. Um, and it needs to sound like it just happens to be easier to play. Not that I took something, took an idea that was much more difficult and forced it to be playable by taking out every other note or whatever. So um, the biggest challenge is just coming up material that I think is interesting and sounds like I might have put that in a harder piece, right. but happens to be playable by you know 13 year olds sure. or something. Sure. Um, so that's generally like the biggest thing with it. And the main thing that I've been doing I think with, there's only one exception, I think, is I depend on the percussion like crazy. Right. So uh, Undertow was the first one I did, and that has a lot of, you know, very involved percussion the whole time. And uh, Foundry has 12, you know, percussionists and 12 percussion parts and uh, with found percussion. And that's kind of the whole basis for the piece was the idea of what to do with the percussion. Sure. Um, Strange Humors is probably grade four, but uh, still, you know, the djembe is the main heart of that piece, the African hand drum. Um, you know, Sheltering Sky is the main exception where it's completely different. You know, it's not about percussion at all. I had to find ways to use the percussion in a piece that's all about just being slow and lyrical. Right. Right. Um, and so in that case, I did, you know, what could be a four mallet marimba part, but split it into two parts so that two people could play it. Right. Um, well, I think you've largely, I mean, you, you've maintained your character, what, what would be Machiasms. Uh, just trombone glasses. Trombone just, 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 just like what we were talking about yeah. this morning with the band, is that you know it's the the elements are there. Uh, they're just pared down a little bit. I mean, they're certainly not wine dark sea, but but that's on steroids, you know. That's right. As, well, that's an interesting thing that you made because the most recent one that I did, uh, that I finished about a month ago. Um, the idea with that one was to you. Well, there were two things. There was a percussion instrument I wanted to use that I had never seen before. Someone got it for me as a joke for Christmas, um, and then also I wanted to take the sound that I used in the last movement of Wine Dark Sea and try to make it actually like the parts that are playable by I think young players. And I think the main thing of that is that a lot of it's in four four essentially. It's in twelve eight, but you can stick it in four four take the triplets and make them eighth notes instead. Right. And and it's really just, you know, trombones and fifths and then a tune on top and, you know, Tom's going, ding, 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 right. ding, ding, which kids can do that. Yeah. So I decided to take that and whereas I you know, said a minute ago, try not to take something and just water it down. That actually was almost a conscious decision in this new one to take something and you know, reduce it to its essence of what makes it sound like that kind of aggression. but make that playable by young people. Right. And then incorporate this instrument called a thunder tube, which was like a thing that a uh, composer named David Rakowski got me as a joke for Christmas. Right. And I thought, I'll just use that. And he thought it was silly, but I thought it was amazing. Well, those effects can be in, you know, in lower level. I mean, you know, you could use super ball mallet on exactly. a gong in a lower level. That's sure, not, it's yeah. Not, it's not like it's a hard thing to do. Right. It's just a cool sound. Right. Yeah. And uh, so the new one that uses the thunder tube, a thunder tube, just basically it's like a handheld thunder sheet. It sounds like a thunder sheet, but it's a, it's really? like a cardboard tube mm. and it has a drum head at the bottom and a spring coming off the bottom. Uh, Remo makes them, I think out of scrap materials is what it looks like. They just put a pretty sticker on it that makes it look like something fancy, but uh, you shake it and it's quite loud or you could hit the spring or you can like, you can shake it and then do wah wah on the hole on the top. And you can also make them. So like you, you can buy them from Remo for seven dollars, or you could probably make it for thirty. But if like you right. wanted a project with students, you could make sure. the thing. Sure. Um, and then I put them around the audience because I hadn't seen a piece with young band that puts antiphonal players around the audience. And so I thought percussion around the audience. You know, I've done that in advanced pieces, sure. um, but not 
I hadn't seen it done with kids. And maybe there's a reason. Maybe there's like you shouldn't put middle school kids <laughs> well, se separated from. They, they'd be closer to their parents, though. So <laughs> yeah, might, so I think, yeah, I think yeah. in performance, it's fine. In rehearsal, I don't know what yeah. they They may well, set the seats on fire in the hall or something. But, um, but all they have to do is, you know, I made the parts really easy. They just like shake the thing, like, you know, swells in and out and their right. time to like do it different times around the audience. Sure. And so I thought it'd be an interesting, you know, learning thing. And then just like the intensity, I tried to use similar to the intensity at the end of Wine Dark Sea. So, right. um, and I think that's, it was a fun approach to, you know, a new thing that I hadn't seen done in a middle school thing, which I try to do. I mean, I don't know middle school literature, obviously, really. Um, so when I come up with something, I'm not necessarily thinking like, has anyone done that idea for kids before? But if I can come up with something and be like, oh, no one's done that, right. that we're aware of, you know, like found percussion, I think was a fun idea, and that was my wife's idea. Um, I think it's it's interesting and give them something new, and it's something more fun to teach that they haven't taught a hundred times. I don't think this. I I don't think it's just you finding it difficult to write a lower grade level piece, and then it not getting it, it always comes out more difficult. I think that happens with a lot of people. Everything you know. Don Grantham has tried this and wrote, yeah. ended up writing a much harder piece than um, Ron Nelson did the same thing. Uh, it's just it's difficult. It's probably more difficult to write those pieces for you guys than than you know than you know writing a grade six. I think uh, it's much harder. Yeah. Um, the way the the analogy it's not really an analogy, but like what I feel like it kind of is is that there's a certain amount of technique that goes into any piece. And either the composer has to have it or the players have to have it. And so I think you can adjust that. You can make the parts technically easier to play, but the composer has to be more skilled because you can't fall back on hiding. You can't smooth out a transition with tons of fancy runs and you know just ridiculous percussion fills and things to like smooth over like getting from this section to this section. The you know it's such the economy of the material is so much more important that it be limited because they can't, you know, they can't play off the staff or whatever and rhythmic things. Like every, it's so much less happening that everything that happens has to be perfect. So, whereas in a piece that's really, really difficult, you know, you can do something flashy. It's almost like you know what you do with like, you know, an infant. Like, look at these keys. You know, you kind of like do that musically with an advanced piece. Like, oh, this part's not very good. But if I go like, look, some flashy happened some over flashy, here, yeah. then no one notices. But you can't do that right. in a piece for thirteen-year-olds. It's more stripped down. Yeah, it's like everything's got to be good. Right. Yeah. So it takes me a long time to write those generally. Usually, um, well, a long time to come up with what the idea is. Sure. Yeah. And then once I have the idea and a, what I think, I think they you need a good. I mean, I don't like to use the word hook. But you need something that the piece is about, like something that's sure. going to do, um, and then you need a good tune. And I think those are the most important things with young band pieces. Yeah. Uh, I, it, there, it's a different set of criteria than it would be for writing for, writing for college wind ensemble. Or so. it's, um, but it's great that um, people are approaching uh, you guys that have written these really tremendous uh, grade six, you know, all world kind of pieces. Yeah. Um, because there there's some attraction to that and we want the, the young kids to be exposed to those kind of sounds um, at a young age. And uh, so I think it's important that young people are commissioning, not scared to commission mm -hmm. people that are writing these big pieces and that um, I also think that they'll find that most of you guys are very approachable. And, For sure, yeah. And want, and want your music played. Yeah, and I think all of us want, I th well, I don't know that we all want to write pieces at that level, but I think we all want to have written pieces at that sure. level. Yeah. Um, then once you start doing it, you know, not all of us are able, like, it's, just, it's really hard. Yeah. Um, and it's really hard to, you know, because the materials are so limited, to not just feel like you can't do anything that you're, your ideas want to have happen just aren't possible, right. you know, with that level of technique. So not everyone can do a young band piece. You right. know? I yeah. don't imagine that, like Schwantner has ever done a young I band piece, and, and I don't and think that will ever happen. Well, and, they, and they don't, you know, I mean, that's that they're a different part of their careers, and yeah. I'm not sure. I would love a Corleano middle school piece. Oh, I'd love to see John Corleano yeah. in a middle school yeah. band rehearsal. That'd be incredible. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, that would be great. How would that so. go? So yeah, I think you know, not all of us do it. The other thing is, I think it's, I, I often talk to, I meet young composers who uh, want to write band music, and even if they haven't written, you know, for anything, 
they want to start with band music because that's the music they know, which right. I think that's a whole other problem. But um, I think composers starting out should not write young band music. Right. This is partially because they don't know how to write for large ensembles yet, and they don't know how to write, you know, the, I think you need to know how to write the difficult stuff to write good, easier stuff. Mm -hmm. And also, I think, if they establish themselves as a composer of music for young bands, there's almost like a brass ceiling. Maybe. <laughs> we could, like, there, there could be. You know, you know, I think you become a young band composer, and that's like a whole, already, you know, I, I, it's annoying that, you know, band composer right. label is right. already a sure. problem. Every word you add is more of a problem. Right. So if you are a young band composer, yeah. then you're a young band composer and you're not going to get a college commission, I think, very right. likely. No, if I all agree. of your pieces are grade threes. I totally agree with that. And um, that's that's really interesting. Like, because you're right, I think people are like, well, I'll run a young band piece because it's easy. Mm -hmm. and like, well... If that's the approach, then it really it's going to sound easy. Yeah. Too. Oh, yeah. And and it doesn't need to be that way. It doesn't need to be under quote unquote educational. Right. It just needs to be good music. Yeah. And maybe that is the key is to write for a more advanced group and really have everything firing, and then try to to come back and try to keep those things that are great and put them into a piece. So. Yeah, that's what I think. I, I don't know. It's I know it's a challenge to find the great pieces and, and the younger levels, but it's it's way better now than it was 20 years ago, um, because we've got more people, real musicians, interested in writing for, for the groups. So. Yeah. So let's let's hear about your latest uh, work for band, which I think is at one of the one of these lower levels grade three grade two yeah it might be a two and a half i'm not sure although it has grace notes in it so mm. i'm not sure if that counts as i don't know but uh it's i think all in four four and i think it's in like g minor i, I should know this i finished it two days ago but um and it was a consortium of middle schools and high schools primarily in north carolina uh, organized by Ars Golden, who is a grad student here at Michigan State now, but was a uh, middle school director in North Carolina when right. she put this together. And uh, it's called 13, and it's called 13 because the main theme in it is one I wrote when I was 13. So um, a couple months ago or a month or so ago, I wrote a blog post on my website about my writing process when I was a little kid. And I had, and as part of that, I went and found music that I had written on you know a Commodore 64 in like the mid 80s when I was a kid, and I you know captured them and made videos, YouTube videos of them, and posted them on this blog post. And one of them I thought was really kind of good. Like I thought the tune for a 13 year old was not bad. So I and it was uh, my wife Abby's idea to why don't you just like use that in a piece for middle school kids, a piece that you wrote when you were in middle school. Yeah. So so I took that theme and. Uh, added a second theme that I think is much, much better because it's new and it's more like how I think now. Right. Um, but it starts with this sort of different theme that's inspired by the 13-year-old theme and it kind of goes back and forth. And the thing I wrote when I was 13 sounds kind of, you know, sort of, you know, everything I write sounds Russian, honestly, I'm realizing. But it kind of sounds, you know, vaguely like Russian folk songy thing and it's all like four bar phrases and, uh, you know, straight diatonic G minor. So, um, and it was fun to do that, to take something that early in my writing life and try to make it sound like music that I'm not embarrassed by as an adult. I think that's a great hook like you were talking about before. That's 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 terrific because those kids can like, well, this is music. He wrote this when he was 13, yeah. which is my age. Yeah. And um, that's, I think that's great use of material cool. actually on great. your part. So We'll see how it turned out. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks. Thank you. It's yeah. fun.